to the broader markets and the economy ahead of Friday's jobs report. Joining us right now is Michael Tyler, who is Chief Investment Officer for Eastern Bank Wealth Management. Also, Jim O'Sullivan is the Chief U.S. Economist for High Frequency Economics. Welcome to both of you gentlemen. Michael, why don't we talk about the markets and that whole idea of sell in May and go away hasn't worked in a while. I think it's been five years, Peter Schack now tells me, uh, all the way back to May of 2012 since we've actually seen losses in May. That starts you thinking about the June swoon. Is that a potential here or where do you see things kind of shaking out? Well, there's also an adage about summer rallies. You can ha have it both ways. The reality is that markets are chasing earnings and as long as the earnings look strong, there's no re reason to be overly concerned about the markets. Uh, you know, what I look at is what are the cash flows, uh, what are companies looking at, and in that respect, if we get continuing Fed policy to be pretty much as expected, and they've been very transparent about that, if we get continuing stable earnings growth, then I think the markets will be okay. You know, will we get a, a, a quick downdraft because of some exogenous event, you know, some political issue or something? Yeah, quite possibly. Um, but you ride through that and, and you stay invested. The markets will be fine. Um, the one concern I would have is that I think mark stock markets in particular are pricing in some form of tax reform this year, and that may or may not happen. So we may have a short-term disappointment to work through. But Jim, other than that, I think the stocks are okay. Okay, Jim, if the question is all based around earnings, then that ties back to the economy, too. How, how do you see the U.S. economy faring? Um, I mean, the economy is, is chugging along. Of course, we have volatility quarter to quarter. The trend in GDP has been about 2%. Uh, Q1 was obviously a lot weaker than that. It looks like Q2 is going to be a lot stronger. I mean, meanwhile, the labor market continues to, to look solid. We've got the lowest jobless claims since 1973. Um, so at this point, I don't see any sudden change in the economy, which has been slow for recovery, but that's what we're continuing to see. As a result, you do have Fed officials starting to talk up the idea of more rate increases. Yesterday, we had the Dallas Fed president say on our air that he expects to see two additional rate hikes this yeah. year and to start tightening the balance sheet at the same time. Will that put a crimp on the economy? Um, I mean, ultimately, the goal is to slow down employment growth. But right now, we're getting, on average, 180000 a month in employment, which is more than enough to offset labor force growth. The unemployment rate's down to 4.4%. It's already below the Fed's estimate of full employment, and it's only going to keep on falling. So ultimately, the goal is to slow down employment growth, not necessarily GDP growth if productivity does better, but ultimately the goal is to slow down employment growth. But it takes time. Right now, policy is highly accommodative, and they're not going to go very rapidly. Michael, everywhere I look, I see these concerns about the idea that all the stock market gains or 30 percent of the stock market gains are coming from these five top technology stocks. You know the group. It's the old fang that is now... Mm -hmm. Apama or something, Apple, you know, you, you go through, you run through those top five technology names. Is that a concern for you? Do you think that this rally broadens out? Are they leading the way or are they just holding things artificially high? No, well, they are leading the way. Um, but in, in point of fact, every year, a small number of stocks are the ones that lead the market. That's just the way that the market works. And there's another group that, that are lagging. Uh, this year, as it happens, the companies you mentioned, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, et cetera, they happen to have really strong revenue growth, really strong earnings growth. They should be leading the market. And frankly, none of them are all that expensive based on earnings right now. None of them, none of the technology ones are all that expensive or the, the other ones behind them? No, of, of the technology leadership, the companies that are really contributing the most to the market, you look at Apple, it's at a market multiple. You look at, at Alphabet or at Facebook, they have real genuine earnings and decent earnings multiples relative to their earnings growth. None of them are outrageously priced the way that we saw, for example, in the dot-com bubble, which I'm sure a lot of people are remembering and saying, oh my gosh, is this another example of 2001 again? Good it point, isn't. Really the earnings are there this time. Are, is this the group that will continue to lead, or, or do you see another group that's going to step in? Maybe if the Fed starts raising rates, maybe the financials step in? Well, the financials are certainly looking very good right now because the Fed might raise rates. The more interesting question for the Fed is, is what they do with their balance sheet, and I think we will see some tightening on the back end of this year um, as they begin to let that balance sheet roll off. Um, and that also gives them a little bit more room to raise rates in the short term. If any of that is going to happen, it has to be in concert with Europe allowing its rate structure to begin to rise as well, which well, would be great for happen. European banks. I mean, that, that's I not going to happen so at this sure. point. We, we've heard from Draghi just yesterday, right, that it, it doesn't sound like it's something that he sees happening immediately. I, I think the tone of his language is beginning to shift a little bit. Uh, we've certainly seen the European banks rally tremendously this year, uh, and that is something that could benefit the U.S. companies as well. 
Um, so I, I wouldn't want to pin it down and say it has to be from Europe or it has to be from the technology leadership. Financials are doing fine. Consumer discretionary stocks are looking quite good right now as well. A uh, little bit less happy with um, Staples companies, which have, have um, done very well, but are fairly expensive. Jim, in terms of what we're expecting this Friday from the jobs report, what, what, what would you see as a very likely number? What's strong? Yeah. What would you well, I mean, the trend's been 180 or so per month. You look at claims, there's no sign of any slowing. That said, monthly numbers are volatile. If you think back a year ago, the May report was incredibly weak. It was up 38,000. So I think for technical reasons, there's actually downside risk this Friday as well. I've got a 140, uh, which is certainly below the recent trend. Um, but even if we get a very weak number, again, as we did for May last year, I think you look at jobless claims and the message is there's been no significant slowing here. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Good to see you. I, it, it's, there's no way, you know, I, 